Two things for you guys. Number one, Easter is the new Halloween. I ate so much candy and my tummy hurts, but I would totally do it all over again. Oh. Two, it's time for two things. Two! Jurgen Klinsmann. One. The former German striker turned coach slash technical director guru became the first U.S. men's national team manager in 28 years to lose to Guatemala after we lost 2-0 in Guatemala City last Friday. Yes, I know it's a difficult place to play. I played there for a World Cup qualifier. I have first-hand experience, but our team looked lost and they looked disillusioned as a group, which is why I'm still pissed off about it three days later, which means I have two things to say about this one thing. A. There has been a lot of chatter about a so-called lost generation with regard to our current players and how they should be so much better than the generation before them and they're not and blah 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 Which for me, even if there was a little bit of truth to it, just a itsy bitsy bitsy is still a total cop-out Bullshit excuse for the coach as he continues to underperform in his job. We have no identity. We have no style of play, which are all the things he promised when he took over. Which leads me to B. If you were a coach and you had a team that you knew wasn't as good as you expected them to be or not as good as other teams they were competing against, what would you do? What would you do? Uh, what you uh, uh, don't know? Well, guess what? I'll tell you. You would make sure that they were organized and impossible to break down, and you would try to build a team with the right chemistry to overcome other deficiencies like Leicester does. I mean, do you think Leicester has the most talent in the Premier League? No, of course they don't, but they do have a great spirit about them and a specific style of play, and everyone on the field knows exactly how they're going to do it, and they all buy in. Why can't we have that here? Oh, I know, because the guy in charge gives mixed messages, plays guys out of position, throws players under the bus in the press after the game, never starts a same lineup twice in a row and never holds himself accountable. <sighs> Romelu Lukaku. One. While on international duty with Belgium, the Everton striker who has scored 18 goals in the Premier League this season, which is 38% of all of Everton's goals in the league, said he would like to play in the Champions League next year. Which got me thinking, uh, yeah, no shit. We would all like to play in the Champions League next season. Two. Your dad stated publicly the other day that you need to leave Everton, which I think everyone would agree is a pretty smart move, even if the club does win the FA Cup this season, and go to either Manchester United or Bayern Munich because he thinks you're ready to make the jump to a big club, which makes me wonder why he mentioned Manchester United. <laughs> the English national team. One. Hopes are rising for the three lines in this summer's Euros after the remarkable comeback from two goals down to beat reigning World Cup champions Germany 3-2 in Berlin. Two. It should be noted though that this game was just a friendly. But still, their desire to not give up and fight back was commendable, highlighted by the quality goals scored by Harry Kane and Jamie Vardy, which gave the team belief that they could beat the best national team in the world. So things to consider? Is it worth even putting stock in this result since England beat Spain 1-0 ahead of the 2012 Euros and then went on to lose in penalties like always? <laughs> Comments, like, subscribe, you guys know the deal. I'll see you tomorrow. Later.